All right, part two of the video. Uh, this will be, yeah, it's not gonna be an hour long, but I'll make sure that I'm showing you, this is my crypto trading account. You can see I have the stochastic and the moving average. This is a 10 day moving average. And this is my Forex account. You can see I have CAD Swiss Frank on the four hour. And I have RSI. So I'm gonna do a quick run through on this first here. So when you click on the indicators, my main window is the moving average and the stochastic oscillator on the indicator window one. When you click on the main window, you can add the indicator. I already have the moving average, so I'm not. there's no point adding it again. You cannot add two moving averages like what you can do in the trading view. In order for you to have two moving averages, you can do the envelopes. And I don't know why I set it at 38, but if you set it to 20, I set it to simple and I change it to zero, right? Everything zero, simple, close. The upper band and the lower bands, kind of like the, the Bollinger bands, if I click done. What you can clearly see is the is the moving average crossing together. You don't have to do this, but it's just one way of doing it. Okay. And then the stochastic, we can click here, it's the 10, the 10 simple moving average, shift is zero, method is simple, apply to close. It's pretty much the, the 10 SMA for me. This is all default. So you can see the K, uh, the percentage K period is five. The percentage D period is three. The slow one is three. Price field is low and high. Method is simple. Level is 20, 80. 80 is overbought. 20 is oversold. My style, your main and your signal. Your main line is identified as the one that's gonna be the solid line. Your signal is, is the dotted line. Click on here. I have my pixel set to three. If you, you can set it to four at the highest, if I save it, click done, you could notice that the, the red line is a lot more bold and a lot more stronger in, in the thickness of the line. And then the orange line is the dotted line. Anytime, anytime it crosses, it's letting you know that it's going to shift upwards or downwards. Where it's crossing going down, when it's overbought, crossing going up, when it's oversold. Um, I know this is on the daily chart, so this is on the daily chart on crypto. Um, let's see what else I can show you here. This is all I'm using on this phone. And then to here, to here, I'm just using the RSI and the 10 day moving average. You can see that. And if I click on moving average, notice how this is exponential. I was just testing it out, but I just go back to the simple cause it's much more effective for me to learn and, and see for myself. The exponential ties in, you can tell the difference. So this is the simple, right? Let me make the simple all the way to four, all the way to four pixels here. Whoa, I thought it did, hang on. Okay. So I just minimize the uh, the bottom window 
so I can show you this. Okay, so I, I made the the ten day moving average a lot more solid in the thickness of the line, making the pixels four. If you make the pixels one, I'll show the difference. You don't really see much of the line. It's on you on your preference on how you want to use this. I just have it set at three. And then I'm gonna show you the exponential that I was using before. The exponential is a little more tied into the price of the candles versus the, the simple. So the exponential moves with the pricing a lot faster. So you can, a lot of people like the EMAs, the exponential moving averages a lot more versus the SMAs. But I like the simple moving average because it's much more effective for me because you can tell a difference that if I were to follow the trend, um, it's easier to, when the simple moving averages are creating the uphill and the downhill curves versus the exponential, exponential moving averages are more tied into the peaks and the bottoms. And it can be very tough sometimes to look at that. So going back to the simple, you can add a level. Uh, you can, when you add a level, when you add a level, you're adding another moving average. So let's just say 50. You put the 50 here. And oh, I know you're not, I know you can't see it, but hang on. All right, 50, red, and all the way to four. You can clearly see, if I were to zoom in, you can see the 50, move, 50 day moving average right here. If that's not enough, you can add another one. You can add another level. We'll do 300, or yeah, 300, which I don't recommend, but. Look at that, the 300 moving average. You don't really need the 300. That's just too much to look at. But you can clearly see by having a bunch of moving averages, you get confused. That's why I only use one. One is enough. Can you add two? Yes. So if you click and hold here on this screen, you see this black dot. Just like that, you can you can move you can move the um, by clicking it and holding onto you can move move your bottom to higher like this or lower. So that is one way of doing it. Uh, like I said, I, the RSI is more accurate on the four hour chart, daily chart, weekly chart, and the, sto uh, and the monthly chart. And then the stochastic is more, is more convenient and more effective on the smaller time frames. One minute, five minute, 15 minute, like the stochastic here. So we were to jump into the 15 minute here. I know I'm on crypto here, so it's a lot more effective. 15 minute, you can see the RSI is coming back to being overbought here pretty soon, but it's still pushing back up. And and this is a very, very more effective way to, to scalp, especially using the stochastic. So, uh, I mean, my RSI is set at 14. It's all default. The RSI, I'm going to go back here. Period is 14, applied to close, levels are 30 and 70, my style is blue. To click on the style, you can change the pixel settings, I have it set at 4. Just to have a bold more thickness, boldness of the lines. And that's it, I have high and low here. In order to put high and low, what you do is you click on the, the RSI, and you click on the levels, you type in, you can type this in. You can type it in right here for low or high. You can put buy or sell or or overbought, oversold. But I just have it low and high. So it's another way of doing at it. 
we can clearly see that the RSI is at 44.92 on on a Canadian Swiss franc pair. And you can see that on the stochastic here on the 15 minute chart for EOS USD is 62.92 and also 74.46. The 74 is the red line and the 62.91 is the orange dotted line. So the most important thing is to follow the first numbers, which is the main line, not the signal, especially for the stochastic.